So today, I'm going to be doing, I'm going to call this, um, compliment, something like be complimentary, not comp, uh, competitive or compliment, don't compete, Some, something along those lines. But basically I'm going to talk about complementary energy and competitive energy because you'll notice that the word compliment, compete, champion, campaign, a lot of these words, they, they sound very similar, like they're almost the same words, you know? And when it comes to competing with one, see, you'll see this in a lot of shows to start with. You'll see this in like, um, So there's levels, there's like you doing this with yourself, there's you doing this with maybe a partner, and then maybe you in some kind of group setting. Um, so there's levels to it. So you'll see it maybe in things like Pokemon on the first episode, Ash is competing with Pikachu. You'll see it in Beyblade, he's competing with his own Beyblade. <laughs> um, you'll see it in, what are there? What are, known ones uh, I think it was in Digimon too it's competing with Digimon um, you see it with uh, what else I don't know there's some other examples that will probably come to mind as I get into it but anyways when you're being competitive see both both com being competitive and uh, complimentary, it'll work. Like you can make, see, being competitive, both are, you could say healthy, both can both end up making you stronger. The one is more like ideal, while the other one is more so like, it just kind of works, you know what I'm saying? You can be in a relationship where you're always arguing and you make it work, but it's not really ideal. Meanwhile, you can kind of be in a situation or a relationship where you're both being complimentary to each other and it kind of becomes an ideal situation. And you could have like, kind of like fry, <laughs> fries and ketchup, you know what I'm saying? It's like complimentary energy. They kind of, they work hand in hand. But if they're not kind of holding hands together, they can kind of be like, trying to pull each other apart on some tug of war type of energy but it can be a really you can become strong based off of trying to pull each other apart and still holding on you know what I mean so you can have a strong uh, connection or it can kind of just be like <laughs> you know what I'm saying complimentary so first off if you're talking with another person or um, you're in a relationship with someone or all these different things. If you get into a situation where you're feeling like you're being competitive with them, and again, there's healthy competition, so not really that, but if you get into a situation where you notice you're like getting to an unhealthy level of competition with people and just kind of competing all the time, you got to ask yourself, it's like, why? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you're, if you can think of a person and you can think of off the top of your head, like five, 10 different things that you dislike about a person, you should be able to think about more things that you like about a person than you dislike. So if you think about like five things that you hate about a person, can you think about 10 things that you like about a person? You know what I'm saying? Like you can't really always be focused too much on the negative. So if you notice that you're always, uh, being competitive with a person or just with people in general and you kind of feel like it's me against the world or me and my partner against the world and some Bonnie and Clyde or me and my group against the world like 
there's some kind of misalignment happening. Because when you're aligned with yourself and you're doing what, you, what you're supposed to be doing, whenever you get into situations with people who, for example, they don't respect what you say, they might think they have negative opinions, and I get like critic being, I get cr uh, constructive criticism, but I'm not even talking about constructive criticism because again, the key word is constructive. A lot of people don't be critis critical to construct or build, and usually the type of people who be construct trying to be criticizing about something you're doing has never even done the thing you're doing. So that's not what I'm talking about, but. Um, Uh, almost lost my point there for a sec. So if if you're not in alignment with yourself, right? Like, and people are talking again, like they're talking negative about what you're doing. They're um, they don't respect what you have to say, or they mm, they have some kind of problem with what you're gonna, with what you're saying so on and so forth, you're going to have, sorry, get that, you know when you be eating mangoes, <laughs> you get that, it's got those like threads or whatever, you know, those like, uh, I don't know what they call it, mango hairs or whatever, I guess stuck in between your teeth, whatever that is, but anyways, when people are kind of in that situation and you now are they um, either say something triggering to get you to go back and forth with them or they might even gaslight you and tell you a bunch of positive things to get you to inflate your ego so that um, they could try to make you look a type of way like there's a lot of different kind of psychological tactics people will do so if that's really the case then what happens is it's better to stay in alignment and don't really allow too much of either the negative or positive to throw you off of what you're already doing because if they're not really building on what what you're kind of already building on then it's like if you're going to work on a house and you're building this house and someone's coming with materials to help you build someone's doing this someone's doing that and then someone comes along and is like hey this is going on over here and they're trying to distract you and pull you over somewhere else and it might be something important but it's not relevant at all to what you're doing you know what i'm saying so being focused and kind of in alignment will allow you to kind of almost be kind of like Neo when he was dodging those bullets in the Matrix. It allows you to kind of just not only stay focused and allow, allow you to complete the things that you set out to do, but it also allows you to be convicted in um, your beliefs and, uh, and I sure when I say beliefs, but like be convicted in what you in what you say and the choices you make and so on and so forth. There's a lot of people who are controlling type of people and they they might think that you're not shit or something like that. And when the things that you say kind of come to pass, not even like on a prophetical level, just on a level of being able to read the signs of what's going on then if they don't, if they think yeah, you're an ass shit or something like that, and but then you're um, doing something that they're like, oh, well, if he can do it, then even then that means, oh, I can do it too, which um, that's, that's kind of a good mentality to an extent, but it's also like degrading in a sense too, when people think, oh, well, if he's doing it, then even I can do it. And it's like, even just to begin to get into that, um, mode of doing whatever you want instead of being inspired by the person to do what it is it's almost like you have to degrade the person to make yourself feel comfortable 
to do that same thing but at the but at the end of the day it's like you're just projecting the fact that you feel like that you're not good enough yourself you know what i'm saying so there'll be people with a lot of crazy psychological emotional mental like psychological mental emotional um different problems that they have and instead of creating solutions on these problems which i think is one of the biggest issues that we um that exists is the fact that a lot of people don't actually try to solve problems you know what i'm saying they'd rather just um not even transmute the situation but they'd rather just kind of ignore like it's good to keep your mind in a good place keep your emotions in the right place all that type of stuff that's not what i'm talking about but a lot of people will try to like will use that to distract themselves from actual problems that exist and i'm not talking about problems outside of them i'm talking about like personal problems and um they won't instead of fixing the problems they'll more so just mask them but when they get into situations because now it's like people have inflated egos or different things because um they get into places of uh some type of value or importance but they haven't dealt with the problems that they have masked those things will start showing up in extreme ways you know and that can become very problematic because it makes it difficult to be to uh to sustain the accomplish ac- accomplishments that a person would want to sustain so it'd be like if uh someone got someone had a dream right and they were living that dream but they didn't really necessarily deserve to be there yet because they had different things that they had to work on before that and while they're living that dream they end up ruining it or they end up not valuing what they have because they didn't actually have to go through the necessary steps to get there so it can become very again more problematic so instead of solving these problems and then get into the place from a proper pro- from a pop- proper progression it can become like a house of like a stack of problems you know so again being com- being competitive has its place and being complimentary has its place like and then knowing your position is definitely important so being in alignment so it's like for example people i don't know for people who eat this type of stuff but um if you eat fries then you have ketchup it's like ketchup might be making the fries shine more even though it's the condiment the, the fry or the you know is like the more it's the star of the show but the the ketchup is making it shine a little bit more you know what I'm saying but if now you're just drowning the fries and ketchup it's kind of like you're um you're kind of drowning out the the actual star of the show you know what I'm saying but the thing is it's like ketchup in its own sense is a funny analogy but ketchup in its own sense is a star in its own sense because like it can pair with a lot of different things you know what i mean it can be used in a bunch of different ways that um especially for people who can't really cook as much it just becomes like a it it, it can become used in so many different ways so it's like if it tries to kind of become the star in one area of where it only needs to you know put a little bit of its energy into it then it won't be able to maybe you can say you'll run out of ketchup before you can you know use it in all the other places so that it needs to be used in a sense if that makes sense so like uh you could have like a singer right and you can have backup singers and these backup singers might even be able to be part of multiple different groups and be backup singers but if they try to outshine the main singer it's like then they won't be able to spread that energy among different groups if that makes sense 
So it's almost like if you see the same backup singer among a bunch of different groups, it's like it almost has its own way of shining. But because it can make so many multiple groups big, it's kind of like which one is actually... Um, It it it, it kind of it gets into like a whole deep thing in, so, in itself. I don't really want to get too deep onto that level, but yeah. So when ever you're in a position where you're feeling like you're being too competitive or someone's trying to compete with you too much, you don't. It's not really your job to. You can you can if you want to an extent. If you um. And if a person isn't really um consciously doing something then they might you know learn from it and make make different changes and stuff like that but it's not really your place to um so again you can to an extent but if a person is kind of like actively working like they don't really want to make certain changes and stuff like that like it's not really your place to uh try to maybe, you know, like if someone's making you feel like competitiveness, it's, it's not really your place to either teach them what they're doing wrong or, you know, different things like that all the time because it's more so like if you're staying in alignment and you're driving, your, you're driving a car and you're driving on the road, right? And if you keep like I understand you gotta stop along the way to kind of like enjoy the the drive and stuff in in a sense like on a trip, but if you're kind of always stopping at every single every time you hit a little rock, and then you step you stop you pull over to check what happened, you see the rock or whatever it is maybe you move it off of the road like if you're always you're never really gonna to get to where you're getting to like it just kind of becomes a thing where. Um, your consistent stops and messing up your momentum and all these different things is probably more obstructive than actually just to keep moving, you know what I'm saying? And as you keep moving down your path and people who maybe didn't understand what you were saying at the time you were saying it, they didn't respect what you were saying at the time, like whatever it is, whenever time catches up so that they kind of can see things from the they, they get the understanding now of what you were saying then they can be like oh like they can but at that point would you rather be like with them there and be like okay see you got it or would you rather be kind of living out the understanding it'd be like if you're telling people it's the end of the world right and instead of getting yourself to the right place and when the world is ending they're like oh i can see the world like i'm just kind of this is just like a simple example like i don't mean this is actually what's happening but um tidal wave comes and hits the person they're like oh i get what you're saying now would you rather be standing with the dude and be like see i told you so and then you die together <laughs> or would you rather be good and then if they get hit and you're like Man, I wonder how so and so is doing, but you know, you don't hold on to the thought. You kind of just you're like, it's the past. Like you've moved on. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes competition, like competition, is healthy. Don't get me wrong, but um, and either way, it's gonna make you stronger. Competition um, or being uh, complimentary, but again, it's better to more so work on staying aligned and again attracting what you want more so than always kind of fighting against um, fighting against whatever it is to make it happen because if you've ever been in a relationship where it was always kind of not like a yes man type of thing but if you got into art problems you, you dealt with it when it you know when it happened it's like every day you kind of had like a thing where it's like we 
are on the same page at the end of every day so that the next day when you know sunrise or whatever it's like it's a new day like we're not bringing old things from the past and you kind of keep moving forward keep moving forward that type of energy when you're working as a team like that you start functioning really well you know so and this is kind of like the components of the car coming together to actually be a car individually it's like you might be able to respect the tire and or like admire an engine and like the you know how all these things are manufactured but then when it actually comes together then when you actually see the car moving then it's actually when when they when they go together then the purpose is actually on point you know what i'm saying like you might not understand ketchup <laughs> you might not like a fry right, right when you have that fry with the ketchup you might <laughs> I remember there's like a there's a video of a kid who tried to fry with ketchup um, to fry with ketchup for the first time and he was just like amazed or whatever but uh, it might make the purpose of it might make sense once you kind of put it together you know what i'm saying and I, that's just kind of like a basic example it's just like the easiest one so if you've ever been in a relationship that's like complimentary and if you're in one that kind of like you always have to work with each other and stuff to get through it and stuff like it doesn't mean like throw that away or you know what i'm saying like it, that that's good um, that's not what i'm talking about but if you're always in a relationship where it's always just problems and problems and problems and problems and problems it's like at this point it's like probably both of you are out of alignment to some ex to some extent and probably both knocked off your purpose so i don't really want to get too deep in that because you know everybody's in their own relationships but just coming from my own perspective i it's like the world already has enough problems so arguing um and arguing isn't really even but just always being at odds with the person that you're supposed to be with to me is an ideal and i just personally wouldn't want to be that in that you know what i'm saying and i don't also want like a yes man or anything like that but um like i said there's already enough problems so what kind of benefit would it be being in a some kind of partnership with any kind of person whether it's like actually like a intimate relationship or just even friendships or anything like that what type of benefit would it be being in unless it's like again like a healthy comp competition where you kind of like like an iron sharp sharp and iron type of situation but if it's always in like a like a degrading i mean type of competition um and maybe one person is masking it too to make it not even seem like that then it's like i'd rather just deal with the problems by myself you know what i'm saying because it's like if you are walking against the wind i'd rather just be moving in the direction of the wind and just be moving in the same direction but it's like if you're like ideally so that'd be more complimentary just moving in the same direction as the wind but if you're already moving let's say against the wind or something like that and now you have another person who's got like a resistance band tied to you and you're walking against the wind and they're pulling you back with the resistance band so why would i like i'm not I might as well just put on weighted clothing too you know what i'm saying <laughs> like that's not really um that's not really purposeful you know so i might as well put you put the person on my shoulders put weight of clothing on have a resistance band tied behind me <laughs> tied to me while having some having my feet chained and then having the chain anchored to the ground like might as well just might as well just not even be moving at that point you know what i'm saying so it's like um i i'd rather just again it's like a no love loss just goodbye <laughs> let me do my thing type of, type of thing you know what i'm saying because i'm the type of person that i'm not really too against um like I'm for groups and relationships and being around people and stuff like that but I'm also not against attachment you know what I'm saying like I'm not really against attachment whatsoever it's um not the biggest deal for me but again you, you might be around certain people like especially people that um are more from your past and like um friends you grew up with um I'm talking more like the ones you grew up with 
family who can only see you a certain type of way, you know what I'm saying? And then projecting that mental image might be slowing you down as well of how they see you. So you can't really become who you're supposed to be. It's, um, you can have all these different things kind of like resisting you, resisting your change, resisting your growth. Wow. It would just be better to, at this point, just detach, you know what I'm saying? That's kind of how I see it with a lot of, um, a lot of, a lot of people, but again, more so with people that, um, you kind of grew up with and all this type of stuff. Some people might be able to see your value, your potential, or your, not even just your potential, but your ability to make, get things done and all these different things, right? And instead of them making a change and being able to like walk with you, they'd rather not change anything in their life and stay attached to you so that like as you keep moving, it's like you're dragging them with you. Even if you don't want to be with them, it's like they got, they, they might make ties so that you drag them with you, you know what I'm saying? This can get into levels of like celebrities with like groupies. This could be deranged fans. If you've seen like that Kevin Hart show, for example, like deranged fans um, to, to an extent. Um, you have like just, yeah, again, so many So many people that they wouldn't, how should I put this? They wouldn't want, it's like they don't want to see you do well unless they're with you. And that shows you that it's like because they're not dealing with their own problems, it's like they want what you have. But since they can't have that because they're not dealing with their own problems and actually just manifesting what's right for them, they also, because they can't really manifest these things for themselves, they also might just not want you to have it either. And it just becomes a thing where it's like that person who was um, with you, for lack of better words, they at some point can just flip and now just not want you to have what you have, you know what I'm saying? So it can become real detrimental. But again, when you're always in alignment and you keep yourself on point, no matter where you go, you're gonna be able to kind of like walk through fire type of things, but no matter where you go, you're gonna be able to kind of like shift the energies around you, not with you just trying to shift energies around you, but it's like people will want to change to kind of match what you're doing because they can see the value in what you're doing. And the people who don't, they might come a lot of different ways, but as long as you stay, again, in alignment, it doesn't, no matter how they move, it doesn't really shake you because you're just, you're just in alignment. So like they move here, you're not all of a sudden like that. Or over here, you're not like, you know what I'm saying? You're just kind of like, <laughs> you're, just, you're just like present. So then eventually when they try to match you head on, it's kind of like, they come at weird angles and shit. So it's not really, um, it's not really something you gotta worry about. It's just kind of like, no matter what, it'll probably end up making you stronger at the very worst. So, um, when it comes to people being competitive, um, and I mean like on a unhealthy level, it can come out of so many different places. It can come out of, again, it can come out of like jealousy. It can come out of, uh, jealousy is a huge one. That's usually one of the big ones. They come out of hate, self hate, usually, but um, and they make it look like they hate you, but it's really just self hate. It can come out of um, possess possessiveness. It can come out of um, fear, where they f the person can fear just a lot of things, and they try to project that on you. A lot of it is really a form of projection. So once you kind of get out of that emotional and mental state, where it's like oh, well, he makes me feel this way or she makes me feel that way or whatever, right? 
and you kind of start realizing like what they're doing is all kind of a mental game right to project all of these different emotions and different states of being onto you so that you don't just be in alignment then you'll start you'll get out of the whole uh you you basically defeat the energy because a lot of times people will project these different states of being onto you because it's like something they know that they can handle you know what i'm saying so like if they can if you have like a parent and then they always try to make you feel like I, you're always going to be your parents chill child and stuff like that but if they always try to make you feel like less than or like you know what i'm trying to say like you're not an adult or you're whatever it is no matter what you do and then they try to make it feel like like you know, this doesn't even have to be parents it could be a spouse it could be anybody but if someone always try to make you feel like you're what you're doing isn't that important and then you always have something to prove to them like um like what you're doing isn't important enough what's happening is realistically what they're telling you is they're feeling like because you're doing something better for yourself for whatever reason they're becoming insecure and making and feeling now like whatever they're doing isn't that important but it's like in a sense, it's kind of, and I don't like throwing this word out too much because this is probably one of the most popular words right now, but nar it's a little narcissistic because it's like, um, I can understand if I was making you feel type of way because I was saying certain things or I was doing certain, like, in a, se in a sense, but it's like, if I'm just being myself and it's making you feel the type of way, it's like, you can't really just be insecure in yourself to that point where it's like, just someone else being like good or great or whatever and this isn't even being like i'm a great person not in like a self-important type of level but just be it's just you being you makes another person feel a type of way then that's just bringing out the shadows in a lot of people so that's another thing too when you start shining more like See, I always make this distinction. Darkness and shadows are two completely different things. Completely different things. Darkness is something beyond what I'm talking about. Shadows. A shadow only exists when a light exists. When a light exists and then it hits an object and then it casts a shadow. The light has to hit an object for a shadow to be casted. Now... If someone has certain insecurities, those are that shadow work. And if your light starts pre starts revealing those shadows, what's happening is your shine also is putting other people in the position where they have to do healing work or shadow work in a sense, which is basically healing work, or they end up kind of being taken over by their shadows or um, they try to project those shadows onto you and then take your shine at the same time. So it kind of becomes like, um, and it's not dark, like dark, again, darkness is a whole other thing, but because to even shine, stars shine at the nighttime, sh stars shine in, in darkness, you know what I'm saying? So like darkness is a whole different thing, but. If that's the case then you can't really again you can't really control you can't really do anything about that you can give someone the the resources again to work through that shadow side but again that's more so for them to deal with and I guess this is why Jedi's and you know whatever like they always kind of like master Jedi energy to an extent or Hunter x Hunter a bunch of different shows they kind of like know how to lower their energy around other beings so that they don't uh become a target because if you ever seen like zombie movies and stuff like that there's some there's some uh it's not always works but sometimes people figure out in these zombie movies it's like okay well if i put a bunch of like <laughs> you know blood and dead dead stuff on me and i start walking around like a zombie the zombies like you mask your scent you mask yourself amongst the zombies the zombies won't notice you you know what i'm saying so the zombies always notice people who are making noise and who are doing the most right just literally who is different than them 
So you sometimes it's not um, the worst thing to kind of do as the Romans do in Rome, except don't do what the Romans do because it's a messed up society. So don't actually do. <laughs> but like you know what I'm saying, like it's not a it's not a bad thing to sometimes to know how to mask your energy among. It's basically knowing how to use your shine, when to use your shine, how to use your shine. I guess the movies are shining, um, Doctor Sleep and Dark Dark Tower, because I consider Dark Tower part of kind of that whole thing. It, um, it, see, and that's the other thing too. It's like when it comes to like your will and your shine and all this type of stuff. And I guess that's what he was kind of learning in Doctor Sleep. If you haven't seen the movie, I'm not really going to explain it. But long story short, he was um, the guy from The Shining, right? Um, if you haven't seen The Shining. Long story short, The Shining the shine is just like an ability. And people can sense that ability when you activate that ability. Because it's like, it's kind of like if you saw this glowing light around me. But like, it was not just around me. Maybe it was like around my house. And it was kind of like, if you like astral projected around the world and it was dark. And you just see all these like lights you know what i'm saying you can kind of just hone in on these shines and stuff like that so it's like when people activate the shine it's like there's other beings basically in doctor sleep there are people who literally hunt people down for the shine or they take their adrenochrome they take their vitality their essence from those people and it keeps them it keeps these traveling elite gypsies that pretend to be poor <laughs> um it keeps them immortal for the most part and they just kind of steal people's shines preferably children but um so the guy from doc the shining he learns in doctor sleep to mask his shine for multiple different reasons but also to not attract these beings because not only do you attract people who try to take that energy from you which again it's not a fear thing so um but i'll get into this in a sec you also track like and you see this in the movie The Shining. You also track like ghosts and entities and all these different things that can all see that in that these different worlds, right? So, what happens is, um, what I was kind of getting into is, your will is, like, you create your reality and your thoughts. You're always going to create your reality. So, will it, what you will into existence, especially someone who has power like that, um, it's you can't control what other people do, but you really have to be in control of what you're willing into existence because if you have that ability to manifest things just kind of like like that then what happens is if you allow these other entities to kind of like use um you as a vessel then you're going to start willing in what these other entities want which becomes really dangerous and i talked about this with i forget what videos but i talked about this way back i talked about maybe like old spiritual warfare videos like the first three spiritual warfare videos, something like that. I talked about this way back. This seems like a long time ago. <laughs> talked about this way back. I was talking about like how a lot of these um, hyper feminists are kind of just channeling Andromedan beings. And these Andromedan beings ties to like the Amazonian kind of woman. Um, uh, yeah, ties to like a whole different, whole, whole essence of beings and stuff. So they're trying to kind of like, um, manifest back onto earth in a sense so this is like a lot of et groups a lot of um a lot of different groups kind of try to manifest through people and stuff like that especially people who have higher energy so death season like i was saying um and especially going into famine season famine season i was talking about for a while now that um it's the opening of the zombie stuff right so the vampire stuff's already been going on but the zombie stuff and you got to be careful too because a lot of people who talk about vampires are also vampires because what happens is it's almost like it's almost like you had a person who was a vampire and you're like okay hey, we know these people are gonna try to find ways to get away from vampires so why don't we be the people that gives them the solutions to get away from vampires but it's like they're running to us you know what I'm saying it's kind of like a <laughs> so a lot of times people people talk um, and there's a lot of people who are like empathic and stuff like that to talk about it. I'm not talking about like that, but, um, cause empathic people have to worry about this stuff a lot, but there's a lot of people who are 
extremely vampiristic, and then they'll talk about vampires a lot so that they can attract the people who are basically good vampire food, if that makes sense. But yeah, so the vampire energy has been around for a minute. The zombie energy is kind of really starting to pick up pace because, um, yeah, like I said, death season it deals with like, I'm not going to explain it again, but the whole Judas and Christ and the whole, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. I've been talking about it for a minute now, so catch up, <laughs> but, um, catch up. <laughs> but anyways, the, um, shadow natures and people and stuff like that, if they start taking over, um, and they don't work on that, then, um, yeah, that's be starting to become zombified. So they start seeing who, especially right now too, with the whole, and like the dab and everything, right? It's like people are seeing who is alike, who is not like, and be, you know what I'm saying? And there's kind of being now this like sifting process of seeing who has kind of their own mind and who is not using their mind as much as they should be <laughs> so and zombies eat brains as we know so this is a whole topic in itself which we'll talk about more as famine season comes into play but it's not really still in death season and yeah anyways whether and again you could say it's just my opinion and again this is also biblical and again there's multiple timelines and stuff like that so i try to stay more on the the fastest timeline where Seven seals is just seven years, and um, I don't know. You could you once you make your shift, then you don't really have to worry about this type of stuff. It doesn't become, it doesn't become. It's not negative in any type of way. It's more so. Um, it just kind of is what it is. I, I wouldn't even say it's positive. It's more just like neutral. But so it's not. Again, it depends on your level of knowledge and stuff like that. Um, however, people receive the message is up to them I, you can't really I'm not really too um, I'm not gonna be really too I'm not gonna try to limit myself so that just in case of like how this person receives the information or this person receives the information it's like the information gotta get out to be honest so depending on how different people try to receive it or how it re how they receive the information is how they receive the information I'm optimistic enough that people will figure out stuff on their own you know what I'm saying and, and I know that's not really realistic to most people. I'm, again, if you're already watching the video, like my video, your chances are you're definitely doing the work to heal yourself. Like, that's really what my whole channel is about, just figuring out how to take it, take useful things to heal yourself for what you need to do. For your, it, It's basically optimizing your whole life. I call myself an optimizer. <laughs> but anyways, when it comes to, again, being competitive or being complimentary, Again, you'll notice the word champion, campaign, compliment, um, compete. They're all very similar words. So when you have competitions, you have a champion, right? And I was talking about um, essentially this is all tied to what the purpose is. Like the purpose of the car is to take you from point A to point B, you know what I'm saying? So when these things work in unison together they complement each other the purpose gets done you know what i'm saying that's a campaign the campaign like if you have like a political campaign or something like that then it's like i want to get to office so that i will make these changes and you know what i'm saying whatever <laughs> and, um you have to build a campaign team you have to have all these people that will you know what i mean like basically complement the person who is running for office or running for whatever position they're running for so again all these words are tied to each other for a reason when different every single thing in that car they have to kind of function correctly like if if one if one piece of the car right if one part of the car isn't working correctly or one part of the body isn't working correctly the rest of your body or car starts to fall out of alignment like if one part of the car stops working correctly then another part of the car stops working correctly and then so on and so forth so you have a bunch of problems 
in the body it's called um it's called relative flexibility so when you if you notice like a lot of people who are older right they start to become like they're hun they get hunched back and you know what i'm saying it's called relative flexibility you can look it up so um a lot of people instead of when your body uh, i don't really want to share too much information on this because getting into the health stuff that is getting more into my business type of aspect but <laughs> so it's free game but <laughs> with relative flexibility what happens is um you kind of got to learn how to work with pain for example when you're younger right you might be kind of like a i don't know how many people remember this but if you're sitting cross-legged and you're trying to keep your body you know perfectly straight and like keep your spine upright all right because as your kid your body's starting to grow to learn how to like you know keep its posture and stuff like that usually it's just uncomfortable and kind of painful right but if you don't if you do that when you get older you get stronger and your body's able to you know have proper posture and be in alignment but if you don't do that what happens is through relative flexibility your body automatically goes in the this will relative flexibility means it, your body automatically will go to it will flow towards the direction where it's least painful so if your body for whatever reason just kind of wants to be like this then and it's less painful and then when you strain yourself up for whatever reason it hurts see pain is not a bad thing pain is just a response and again this is free game so you're welcome but um all of this is free game but this is real free game because like this goes into more of the business stuff on my side of things but relative flexibility deals again with more so how you respond to pain like that old man who's like hunched back and all that type of stuff it's a chain of events like for him to kind of get his neck and all that stuff unbent his chest also has to open up <laughs> i don't know if you could hear my chest crack there but his chest has to open up his shoulders have to rotate open his neck has to get back he has to start looking upwards and his whole outlook on life has to change um he might have to get the kinks out of the side of his neck he might have to stop complaining and get bent getting bent out of shape every time he complains um yeah so it, it becomes it becomes a whole deep thing where it's like your tricep might be sore and you try to like stretch your tricep but for whatever reason you don't even realize like okay maybe your subscapularis maybe your maybe your damn quad is keeping your tricep tight you know what i'm saying it's because like these things kind of all they work synergistically like that's why you have a bicep and a tricep you know what i'm saying that's why you have like a, like, a, like a quad and a hamstring like they every time you're flexing your bicep your tricep is stretched out every time you're stretching your tricep or flexing your tricep your bicep is stretched out so this is what i mean by complementary energies and um versus competitive like your bicep and your tricep aren't competing with each other you know what i'm saying I guess if you want to talk about bodybuilding, which that shit's kind of gay, but I mean, if you have like a bodybuilding show, even when people compete with each other in a show, a lot of these guys like on a higher level, to, like are be actually friends with each other. Like to be honest, it's like complementary to each other. I don't really want to get into that because that shit's kind of gay to be honest, like the bodybuilding shit, but that <laughs> it is, it is pretty gay. But they, um, even if you were to lose a show, it's kind of like, yeah, you know what? I'm not gonna even talk about that shit. That shit is like I don't even want to get. I don't even want my mind. <laughs> it's just, yeah. Um, yeah. So you can have like a bouquet of flowers, and they're all gonna complement the one arrangement. You know what I'm saying? Um, you can make your own analogies to bodybuilding if you want to finish that. I don't even want to finish that thought. So when you have like a male and a, so there's a you versus yourself. But if you're and that was like the whole Ash and Pikachu, and you know what I'm saying? Tyson and Dragoon and like usually them and their partner like their spirit partner learning how to not compete with themselves right um this is usually the hot-headed argumentative person who would be competing with themselves once they learn how to work with themselves then when they start working with other people they can start learning from other people very well and um everybody kind of has their place and everybody has their time to shine their and they rotate and it works because it's like I look at it like this too, right? If right now the sun is in Taurus, right? And 
if you don't know about astrology, then I mean, this might lose you a little bit, but just understand, let's say, let's just agree that there's, let's just say there's 12 zodiac signs because, I don't know, people want to go into 13, uh, like, just for the sake of this analogy, for, for this, to understand what I'm talking about. 12 zodiac signs, right? Well, for sure, 12 houses. 12 zodiac signs, right? If, or let's just say houses, actually. If the sun is in my fifth house right now, I'm a Sag rising, so if the sun is in my fifth house right now, right, that means there's a spotlight on my creativity, right? So one person might have a spiritual message to say this is what we should be doing, but what you should be acting on or what you should be doing is dependent on what house your sun is in. So each person is going to get different spiritual messages about what we should be doing. If you should be resting, the, house, the sun might be in like your... I don't know, your second or your twelfth or your eighth or I don't know, it could be in different certain houses, right? Um, it's probably in your twelfth house if you should be resting right now. So that's probably why you're feeling that. But if the sun's in my sixth house, I should be getting some work done. If the sun is in my fifth house, this is why you kinda gotta listen to yourself first and foremost. But if the sun's in my fifth house, right, that means while the spotlight is on my creativity, I should be doing creative things, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, so I should be using a lot of energy. Now the person who's saying you should be resting and this isn't directed at anybody, but while they're resting, now if there's, let's say, 12 of us in a group, right? The sun is always going to be for one of us in each house. So when I'm resting, now I'm going to be getting my own information and stuff like that. But I'm also going to have some time to maybe look into what other people are doing. So if the sun is in someone's sixth house and they're getting a bunch of work done, right? And... Um, let's say now the sun is in someone's seventh house, right? And they're sharing, they're relating information about to other people about like the work that they got done and like, you know, all the creative things that they were doing maybe two months before that or whatever, right? Then even while I'm resting, this person is going to be sharing the information that they did and all that type of stuff. So now a few months from now, when now the spotlight's on my creativity, when another person's resting, you know what I'm saying? So it becomes this thing where it's like, um, the sun is always shining in every aspect. Like the sun is sh illuminating the entire uh, wheel in a group, if that makes sense, at all times. So a group is able to kind of work in a nice unison fashion where, um, and it's not just the sun, there's obviously other planets, but the but things are working in a unison fashion where certain um how should i word it it could be like you could say the money is always circulating like if we had a group of people and we all had different businesses and i buy from you you buy from me they buy, like we all buying from each other when i buy from you then and you buy from this person but then that person buys back from me it's like the money's always circulating, you know what I'm saying? So this is this is how you kind of close the cycle, which I will do a video on soon. I've been, this video, I've been waiting forever to do this video. I don't know why it's taking, I guess, timing, but it's been a while for me to get this video done. Um, and also this closing the cycle video. But So I'll talk more about that, probably one of those other videos. So it keeps this kind of like harmonious flow where like the body stays healthy or the car stays functioning correctly. You know what I'm saying? So kind of just creates a continuous network, which again, I'll talk about more in the closing, closing the loop, closing the cycle video. So for myself, for example, I've had, like for staying in alignment, I've had to learn because I'm born on an eclipse, a solar eclipse. I've had to learn, um, partial solar like I don't, I don't want to get hyper specific but uh, solar eclipse right i've had to learn okay well i might get into situations where i can eclipse people or they might eclipse me which is either way not a good thing <laughs> it becomes like a thing where um uh you can kind of like like eclipse, right? You can kind of like occult another thing. So kind of like hide another thing or another person can hide you. And it kind of feels like 
it's like, okay, well, this thing might be getting energy from this thing. So it's like, if this is me, someone might be getting energy from me and you don't see me at all, but they're in the spotlight or something like that. Or I'm in the front and I'm also getting energy from this, but it's like, so it becomes this thing where it's like, I've had to learn for myself in, um, mainly growing up, more so growing up the whole time. Um, kind of how to stay in alignment with that. And for me, that's more so about, like just to use myself as a personal example, more so learning about how much energy to put into a situation and when to make connections, when to cut ties, um, basically how much, and I drive a standard, so I guess that was a good way to kind of learn about this a little bit, but really when to like let off the clutch, like, you know what I'm saying? Like how much gas to put in and everything like that. So it's, uh, yeah, regardless of how people feel, if they're attached to me or if I'm attached to them, like regardless of all that type of stuff, because again, you want to be in the, you want to be in the physical, but you want to be in the world, but not of the world. And if you get into the world and you know, everything is like an illusion, all that type of stuff. But when you're getting around people and there's some kind of attachment being formed, that's not what you, um, I, I can't, I can't really let that happen because if an attachment really gets formed, like any kind of like, uh, unhealthy attachment, especially then yeah, it can become, it can become dangerous. There can be healthy attachments, but it's like, again, it has to be in a complementary fashion where, um, there's definitely a healthy attachment between your lungs, the alveolar sacs where the blood gets exchanged with the oxygen. That's where when you breathe in the alveolar sacs at the bottom of your lungs, right? They exchange, exchange of the oxygen into the blood, like into the capillaries, right? Which, you know, goes into like the veins and the arteries and so on. It circulates through your circulatory system, your heart and all that type of stuff, right? So it's definitely a healthy attachment between the lungs and the, and the heart. That is the easiest way to say it. Like if there wasn't that attachment between the lungs and the heart or the lungs and the blood, right? The bloodstream then your blood wouldn't be able to pump oxygen because if there wasn't that attachment, the oxygen would be able to go from your lungs to the, to the, to the blood. But that's why there's like those, for example, the alveolar sacs where one molecule of oxygen, they're really tiny, gets exchanged into the capillaries, which capillaries are extremely tiny uh, blood vessels. It has to be that way because there has to be this one-on-one -on -one exchange where uh, it's this even exchange. So there's basically what I'm getting at is um, there's levels of filters that exist between objects so that there's a healthy passing effect of energy like this osmosis or this um, there's this healthy uh, exchange of energy because for example the sun when the moon reflects the sunlight or you take in sunlight into your skin, right? Or into your DNA, the sunlight is really going into your DNA and there's gene expression happening, right? Now, if your DNA was just floating around and taking the sunlight directly, it would get cancer pretty much. <laughs> like it would be unhealthy. But the fact that your melanin, digest the light and then it goes through different parts of your body and it goes through multiple layers of you could say filtration before it reaches your dna like there's filtration levels there's masks or veils for a reason like there's a reason why um for most people unless you reach higher dimensions and stuff there's a reason why when you go to sleep and then you dream and then you filter out all of the unseen stuff that you didn't notice in the daytime right and you filter that in your dreams most people don't do that on a daily basis. It's like, chances are like, they're figuring out stuff that happened like 20 years ago in a dream, like 20 years later. So I mean, but if you're healthy, like when you're filtering out stuff in your dreams about stuff that just happened in the daytime, like there's a reason why that happens in the dream time. Like if you're healthy enough and you can directly take the, like you can see, like you can dream walk in a sense, like you can see what's happening on the sub, the subconscious realm while you're in the physical realm. That means you're powerful enough to kind of 
uh, go between veils. This is also why angels, when they say, do not be afraid, and you have to kind of like, they have to mask their energy so that, because they would just completely eradicate like a person based off of their, their heat and their light and all that, right? That's why that happens, because um, power, you know what I'm saying? Power has to be, has to go through a filtration process. Basically a mystery system, but um, not like these bullshit secret societies where they're just keeping information to hoard power and feel like they, and this is that complementary versus competitive thing, you know what I'm saying? As soon as these Greeks got the information, they ran with that and tried to take over the world. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it, it's, um, it's that complementary versus competitive energy. And this is the thing too. A lot of times when you're in a position of power, when you're, and like, I'm not trying to sound condescending in any type of way here, but just, this is realistic. Like if you see an ant, you're not really competing with the ant. You're like, okay, well at any point, if I really wanted to, like if, this, if you have this type of mentality, I don't, but I mean, if you have this type of mentality, you could just squash the ant, you know what I'm saying? Like, even if you don't have that mentality, there's no way you're really, unless you're on like, bunch of psychedelics or something like you're not really fearing an ant you know what i'm saying because it has really no power over you in a sense unless it's like hunter x hunter and it's ant king or something like that but you're not really fearing an ant now the ant might be fearing you you know what i'm saying like when you're in a position where there's someone in a position above or like um like a higher in a higher a higher level of a hierarchy if you're in some kind of hierarchy right the thing in the higher position of power is not fearing the thing that's lower than it. You know what I'm saying? But the thing is, a being in a position of power that really understands the value of what it has, and this is even, I think, in the 48 Laws of Power and stuff like that, too. Like, for example, I think, I don't know what law it is, like 43 or 40 something. I don't know. I haven't even read it. I just know this one law <laughs> over a lot of them because... Um, it's like, it's something along the lines of like, um, you'll never really know what a person is willing to do to get revenge type of thing. You know what I mean? Some, something along those lines, because, um, a person might really dedicate their whole life to just taking you out just because either they might be influenced by some kind of spirit or like whatever it is, but it's just, you never really know the length of a person that they'll, that they'll go to. So if you're in a position of power, you have kind of like a certain responsibility because you'll never know what this being that's kind of like lower um, your light how much um, if this being doesn't really know how to transmute its shadow nature on its own that shadow can become very powerful and since there's like an umbilical cord like Ra and Ape have attached between the two it's kind of like a bungee cord too, so it might like bungee back to try to to try to take you out. And it's the whole Judas and Christ and all that type of stuff. So this is kind of the whole complementary versus competitive thing. Now, this doesn't mean you should fear anything like that or any or fear your own shine or anything like that. But what that means is uh, first of all, everybody's responsible for transmuting their own shadow nature everybody because you're only responsible for yourself now that's actually in hunter x hunter what the ant king was about too because it was like humans did so much stuff to nature and you know and all this type of stuff like the ant king came and just took they're taking people out so that's kind of what that was about now and also the movie us and you know i mean like stuff like that so I should put this. As long as you stay in alignment and keep focused on what you need to be doing, because again, you can't really control what other people do and all that type of stuff. You will never, like, you'll never go wrong, is the easiest way I can word it. Like, you'll never. 
See, when it comes to your will, I was talking about this before, right? I kind of went on a giant tangent, but when it comes to your will, it's like you have such a strong power to will things into existence and you're responsible for that. And what happens is other people might project thoughts and emotions and things like that to try to will things onto you, but you can be the type of person that people will be like, well, anything can happen. Well, this can happen. Well, that can happen. Well, anything can happen. It's like, no, it cannot happen. <laughs> Cause the thing is, is like, you're creating your own reality. So if people say, and I was just into like, kind of like an argument about this earlier, um, little arguments, it's like back and forth, but basically you're saying like, well, like anything can happen. Well, if, well, what if this happens and this happens and that happens? And you're in this position. I'm like, well, I will not be in that position. Like, I will not be in that position because I will never will that to happen. You know what I'm saying? And well, what if someone else does this and then you get put into that position? And it's like, well, I believe that I'm protected and my <laughs> my will is strong enough to outshine people's negative intentions onto me, if that makes sense. Like, I'm not the type of person that see that type of mentality is like a revenge type of mentality like if someone's doing something to you it doesn't mean now i have to if they're trying to fight you it doesn't mean you have to like if someone's doing black magic or like not even black magic if someone's doing like uh that ventriloquist type of i don't even want to put on voodoo right but like that ventriloquist like voodoo doll voodoo doll type of thing onto a person you can override that type of stuff you know what i'm saying like If you shine, if you if you if you shine more, then that shadow is just gonna disappear. Like you can, you can, you can outshine energies like that just based off of you enhancing, just you turning up the, turning up the energy a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. I'm not the type of person that needs to do ever in my life or will ever do in my life. I don't need to do certain drugs or anything like that to get my energy up. Like my energy is usually extremely high. Like if anything, I bring my energy down most times, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I keep it, I keep it chill because, like, I'm, I'm, I'm the type, type of person that I can have energy that I could just be awake for, like, a whole week, you know what I'm saying? And not on no clone shit, and not, like, shit, like, I don't need to sleep. It's not like that. Like, I just, I just have a lot of energy, you know what I'm saying? So, it takes a lot, like, so, it'll be a thing where a lot of people, again, with that eclipse energy I was talking about before, will try to put me in the back and have like a whole group in front of me because it's like I can almost power like a whole <laughs> a whole group. But the thing is, is like if I don't want to be a part of that group, it's like I'm not giving you any power. You know what I'm saying? Like I can overload a per like I'll overload them. I'll overload a person if they want to take try to take my energy and shit. So it's like that that will not work. So if a person is in a position where now they're in a in like a, some kind of spotlight and they're not liking it's like people are seeing them for kind of how they are or they're being put on the spot or whatever right and now they're starting to you can see no matter how they want to play it off you can see in their i don't know in their grace in their in the way they try to just in the way they try to move that things aren't really working in their favor no matter how they try to put it off i don't do any kind of spiritual things to come harm anybody i don't put spirits on the people i don't do any of that stuff i don't feel the need that i need to do that you know what i'm saying <laughs> like ever i will never i don't feel like i need to do any of that type of stuff and that's because a person the truth will always show it for itself you know what i'm saying and when a person's in that position for themselves they got to deal with the consequences consequences themselves like i've learned how to i've really had to learn how to um and definitely when i was younger i don't really get like this now but like anger and all that other type of stuff i've had to learn how to for example transmute all that energy into like that extra energy i have into creative energy you know what i'm saying and close my own cycle know how to use my energies for myself and stuff like that because um when you come from the heart, 
almost becomes like a superpower to be able to use your heart chakra and transmute energies like that because people will think that oh if i do this to this person then he'll be like this and he'll be in this position and then you'll th they'll think that basically they can keep you in some kind of toxic or messed up relationship with them but it's like no <laughs> it's like if you don't want to heal you don't want to heal but at the end of the day if you if you want to keep trying to attach me to some negative shit it's like you're going to be put into a position where you're going to be seen for what you truly are and if now you're at a point when you look at yourself in the mirror and you don't even you don't even know what the hell is looking back at you <laughs> or you just don't like what you're seeing that means you're being put into position to make a change and if you're the type of person that again you're like well life is just experience it doesn't really matter what we go through and then i guess go through that but that's how that's called killing your child your inner child and you're doing industry rituals on yourself and at the end of the day self-hate is self-hate so <sighs> selfishness all that type of stuff it gets really bad in some people but yeah so again i always wish the best for people and for people to um make the best decisions for themselves like i could care less about what your decisions whether they're good or bad like for me i could care less about any of that more so do what's best for you but a lot of times if you're doing something that's best for you and it's bad for someone else that's actually not what's best for you and you might think it is on a sh because you have a short-term way of thinking but once time plays out on a longer term to start realizing that there's something something is not clicking it's resisting it's like so before you can be before you can have other people compliment you or look at you a certain type of way or you get a certain type of recognition or a certain type of you know what i mean whatever it is for whatever reason that you feel like you need that from other people you got to realize that you're looking for that first from yourself and you're actually just at war with yourself even if you think you're at war with all these different people you're actually at war with yourself and you can be spiritual and still not understand this type of stuff because it's more six dimensional type of stuff so you might not even but once you understand that and you're at war with yourself and you start healing that aspect of yourself and you don't feel like you actually need anything really from anybody outside of you you start attracting you start attracting it because now you actually are that admiration that you actually are that abundance you actually are those you know what i'm saying you actually are those things but like you actually are it and since you are it instead of just barking it <laughs> um you start attracting it and now if you see another person who just naturally attracts that type of stuff this is why a lot of times the person that looks real foolish and they're just like happy and they just don't know about anything going on in the world and they attract so much energies to them is because they are it you know what i'm saying while other people want to be it they're chasing it so the thing they're chasing is the thing they're seeing but the person that is it they don't have to see it outside of themselves they just are it so it just naturally flows to them like it just it's just how it works it's not anything complicated it's not all this psychological manipulation it's not all these handler tactics this mk ultra <laughs> mind control tactics it's not all these emotional ma manipulation um manipulating like women manipulating men on some i don't know now it gets to a point where a woman will want a man so bad they want to become the man and i'm not even talking about the tranny type i'm just saying like they become like their energies become flipped and then when they see the type of person that they want they'd rather flip that person's energy instead of just not being a compliment to it like it and then same with men instead of being the type of person that attracts the like again a complimentary type of woman they'd rather
you'd rather destroy. You'd rather kind of destroy and break down a woman instead of just like building with them. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it becomes this again this real unhealthy relationship that's just such a deep comp. It's not even competition at that type at that point. It's like it's crazy like war <laughs> at that point. It's it's crazy. So, and once you start realizing these things about yourself, if, if it's you, you know what I'm saying, this isn't the time to now get into a position where now you just hate the other person even more, or now you become a victim problem solved like the number one thing that should be in most people's mind is problem solving anytime a situation is happening just think about it in like a problem solving way not in a this made me feel like this so i gotta react like this you know what i'm saying or nah man i'm thinking this it's like why are you thinking that if you're still thinking about it in a week it probably is important that like unless you're just holding on to it like on like a grudge level why are you thinking that why are you feeling that instead of projecting it onto other people project it onto a piece of paper or you know and if you start writing all these different things that you might hate about a person think about okay well now are they bringing out insecurities about yourself and this is actually things that you're hating about yourself think about do I actually, like, if, if I'm seeing all these negative things about a person, can you write positive things that you see out of a person? Because if you just have this often, like, if you just have this pessimistic view all the time, and you call it realistic, that's just pessimistic, and you just see negativity out of everything, you have... You're in, a, you're in a competitive energy. That's all you're really doing. Like that's what, on a spiritual level, that's really all it is. You're just being competitive, very hyper-competitive. And this is the craziest part about it. You might think you're in control, but chances are someone's probably, or an entity is probably influencing you and you're just a puppet to a, a person or a spirit. And you might think you're this independent type of person, but in reality, you're being influenced. You know what I'm saying? So it's not about being some yes man type of thing. Like it's not that again. But are you and it's not you shape shifting again to a person so that you can be complimentary to that person. It's like are you actually are you actually like an energetic match to the thing that you're around? You know what I'm saying? Like, can you just be in your natural state of being around whatever person it is? And when you're in that state of being with that person, can they be in their natural state of being as well? And when that happens, you get like an ideal heavenly type of, <laughs> you know what I mean? Frying ketchup, <laughs> frying ketchup type of situation. Or that competitive shit can just bring you straight to hell. You know what I'm saying? Where everybody's just burning up. And I, I know, like, hell is more cold than hot. But I'm just saying, like, more where you're both just being burned the whole time. You know what I'm saying? Like, hot is good, but being burned is not. It's like, heat is good. I'm not even say hot, hot. Well, actually, I like hot. But still, heat is good. But, like, being burnt. I don't know about being consistently being burned look like a walking STD if you keep getting burned. <laughs> so the um look like a dried up raisin. Anyways, so <laughs> um that competitive stuff can again bring you to your darkest natures. That complementary energy can bring you to um most 
satisfied times that you're in, you know what I'm saying? You might be so satisfied that <laughs> you and you you just you're just living and eating good and you're just doing too much. You're, it's so good that you just start you start just letting go. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that's not a uh, again, you gotta have a balance. So you gotta be like staying hungry so that there's always so you're always growing on a limitless level or bound I'd rather say boundless because it's but on a boundless level but um because infinity kind of has an end to it but more so on a boundless level but you kind of want to be in this um it's kind of why ash and pikachu he was like let's go catch pokemon forever type of thing you know what i'm saying it was like being able to be in that heavenly state forever and boundlessly grow you know what I'm saying? It's not about being perfect or any of that type of stuff. It's just maximizing. Actually, not, yeah, maximizing all the situation. Well, maximizing your potential. It's not really doing the most, but just like maximizing what you can do. Like being the most that you can. Being around other people that also kind of complement that. Being in the experiences also that help you grow, but um, basically being in the type of realities that you want to be in to help your growth, right? To the point that you start cycling correctly, you know what I'm saying? Like the wheels on the car are are functioning correctly. Like your chakras are all spinning. Your Merkaba like your Merkaba is active you know what I'm saying like your, your your light shift like your your you're able to keep moving correctly so I'm just trying to think if I forgot anything Usually, yeah. Could just pause. Honestly, I could just pause the video and just see if I forgot anything. But you're gonna have to give me a second. No, I mean I think I got everything. I feel like I forgot a couple analogies at the beginning that I was gonna use too. Yeah, again, balance is important. Um, like balance and everything. And it's like balance isn't like it's like this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The part is lighter than the feather tip. So it's a little bit. It's like when you see the flag with the lion and his right foot is up and it's stomping on the eagle. It's like it's this process of continually purifying and refining yourself. You know what I'm saying? And you, you're okay the way you are. Well, however, self development is part of the. It's part of the experience. You know what I'm saying. And by self development, I mean coming closer to truly like who you are, type of thing. You know what I'm saying. Like the tree doesn't just start as a seedling; it stays as a seedling forever. It keeps growing, and it keeps growing. And honestly, a lot of trees are, real real trees are actually like immortal; they just keep on growing and stuff. But you know, it's a little bit of a different world now. But still keeps on growing and it's continuous self-development you know what I'm saying when I say self-development I don't mean no shape-shifting type of shit but continuous self-development you know what I'm saying so complementary energy this is a lot easier than, than this, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot easier. You don't gotta. You don't gotta. Um, how should I word it? You don't 
when people be swinging at like a pinata <laughs> and they just keep on missing it and stuff like that the person kind of just centers themselves walks straight they don't listen to everybody going like go left go right go <laughs> walk forward and you swing you're gonna hit something <laughs> but, but if you hit that pinata and everything comes out Everybody gets a piece of candy, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> if you're um, if you're trying to move forward in life and you're getting resistance, like resistance is a good thing because it tells you that again, pain is not a bad thing. Like resistance is not a bad thing. So regardless of if you, like I'm not to say this isn't to say competition is bad compliments is good it's not even to say that competition no matter what like let's let me bring this full circle actually this is probably a good way to end this too competition either way makes you stronger it makes you stronger because even when people are doing all of this crazy stuff to you if you can stay in alignment it really shows that the stuff that whatever you're doing is much more powerful than all that negative stuff that other people are doing. And if you don't even go down to the level other people are going to and you're just not even doing any of the stuff that other people are doing, <laughs> then it's like, how can, how can all the simple things that you're doing be more powerful than all the supposedly powerful, you know what I mean? putting spirits on people and all that stuff that other people be doing how can just keep moving along your way be more powerful so it shows you how being in alignment like a tree and how strong a tree can get because it has strong roots and all that versus people who keep shifting and stuff and the roots never actually grow correctly how fast you can move by being still and then what happens is once that tree starts to grow, right? It'll start matching up with, uh, if this is, if it's in a forest or something, but there will be other trees growing beside it. You know what I'm saying? And the roots will start linking with each other. And it'll become a strong network where they all complement each other. Meanwhile, all those other things that were at the bottom that were trying to compete, it's like you become so large that those other things that were trying to compete, like they're not even in your reality anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like they can't even, like there's really nothing. So again, competition will reveal the truth and what's actually strong while complementary energy will be there with you while you're strong. That competitive energy usually just, again, it's not a negative thing, but unless those competitive things start to learn, kind of like on a Vegeta type of thing, how to start growing with you, then it can be those things that were competing with you, they can stay in that healthy competition, but now be complimentary, you know what I'm saying? So. But, you know, people like, what's his name? What's the dude's name? <laughs> I know you, you all watch Dragon Ball, you don't know who I'm talking about. What's his name? I remember the dog, Shu, and the girl that, they were partners. The Emperor Pilaf. <laughs> Where is Emperor Pilaf now? <laughs> you know what I'm saying?